Welcome to part 2 of the video Craft Ajax REST API course examples with Spring Boot, jQuery and Bootstrap with me Nam Haming from CodeLava.net In this second part, I will guide you how to code the second uh, Craft module for a Spring Boot project and in this uh, module, it will manage uh, one too many entity relationship in the database and we also use Spring Data JPI for the data access layer uh, time lift uh, in the view layer as a template engine. Spring RESTful web services to uh, expose the REST APIs to the clients. And in the client side, we, we use the query to make AJAX calls to consume the REST API. And uh, we use Bootstrap to make a responsive web user interface. And we use MS query database. This is a uh, one too many entity relationship uh, we are going to manage in this second part. You see between the two tables, countries and states, uh, a country can contain one or more states and a state belongs to only one country. So the entity relationship is one too many. In the first part, we already implemented the CRUD module for managing countries. And in this second part, we are going to implement another module for managing states. This is a user interface designed for the module states that allows the end user to manage states or provinces in a selected country from the drop down list here. First, the user load a list of countries into a drop down list and select a specific country and then he or she can create new update or delete uh, states or provinces in uh, that selected country and I draw this picture to help you understand how the application works and uh, what the code we are going to write so in the first part uh, we already created the entity classes state and country to map with the two tables countries and states in the database and in this second part, we are going to code the state repository interface to use Spring Data API to access the database. And uh, to expose the REST APIs uh, for the clients, uh, we need to code the state REST controller class to use uh, Spring RESTful Web Services to expose CRUD REST API to the client create a rechip and update uh, states and in the client side we use the query to make exact calls to consume the rest the API is exposed by the uh, server and we send data in form of JSON format to the server and also receive the response data in form of JSON format and then we use the query and JavaScript to update the HTML document This is a project in uh, Spring 2 Sui IDE and uh, you can see we already have the entity class state here with the fields ID, name and uh, country and now we are going to code the state repository class to use Spring Data API so we create a new interface here The name of the interface is state repository and this interface uh, should extend the CRUD repository interface uh, provided by Spring Data API and the entity type is state and the type of the ID is integer and uh, let's write a test class to test the state uh, repository in the test uh, package here can she create a new test class here the name of the test class is state repository test
and we use uh, the annotation uh, data JPA test. So Spring, uh, we load all these uh, uh, classes and components related to repository for testing. And the first uh, test method, we want to uh, test, create a new state in the database. Public void test, create state. And in this test class, we need to have a reference to uh, an instance of the test entity manager, private test. Entity Manager, this is provided by Spring Data JPA, so we can use an Entity Manager to proceed some data, and we also need to have a reference to the repository to wire state repository here yeah, report. And uh, we use the properties in this file, test.properties. So we need to use the uh, uh, test uh, property source annotation and location pointing to uh, that property file in the class part, test.properties. And Spring Data API, we Use in memory database S2 uh, database, and uh, here in this property, we specify the property uh, create and drop. So, uh, when the test run, it will create the database, and after that, it will drop the database. Yeah, uh, because the entity didn't uh, between uh, state and country is one too many a state has a reference to country so uh, we need to create a country first uh, using uh, the test and entity manager here yeah, we create the country first entity manager we proceed a new Country object, proceed, new country, country name is United States, for example, and this proceed method return uh, an instance of the created country, country, and then we use the uh, report history method to save a new state the report save new state we need to have a constructor that takes name and catchy so then read uh, there's a constructor here Name and country. New state. Name is California. For example. And uh, this step method return a uh, newly uh, saved uh, state object. State. State here. Yeah. And we assert that uh, the state object is not known. So we are using uh, assert, assert not known, not known here, state. And we also assert that the ID of the state is greater than zero. Get ID. Greater than zero. That's it for the test create state method now let's run this uh, test method 
Seus are live view. Run test. The unit test. You see the test has been passed successfully with a green check mark here. And in the console view, you can see uh, Spring Data JPI use uh, uses in memory database embedded database S2 here instead of the real MySQL database. And you can see it prints the various SQL statements to uh, create tables here and uh, SQL insert statement insert into country and uh, states here insert into countries and insert into state tables and finally it uh, roll back the transaction and close the database connection that's it and because in the user interface uh, we allow the end user to select to list uh, states uh, for a specific country so in the repository uh, we need to have a method that uh, lists states uh, by country so we declare a method here public list return uh, List of state defined by country and the parameter is the country object. Uh, we need to generate the getter and set a uh, methods for the country view in the state entity class. Get and set us here for the country field. Okay, so it will suggest the method uh, file by country. Let's do it again. Five. You can see file by country suggested by Spring 23 ID here. Very good, right? And now let's write the unit test to test uh, list by country in the state repository test class here. In the second test method test public void test list by country. And first we need to insert some. Uh, Countries into the database using the entity manager. So we can copy and paste, and then we find this code. The first country is United States. Country one. We proceed. Uh, Three states to this first country: California, New York, Nevada, and the second country. Second country is uh, United Kingdom. Country two, country two, and state of province is London. And now we call the report method file by country, and pass a new country object uh, with uh, the ID. This is uh, country United States. We have ID uh, one. Country USA equal new country 
and share the you share the ID ID one set ID and we find the states by the country USA and this return a list of the state list state list states and we answer that the list state is not empty so we use uh, assert that uh, statement from assert j list that is not empty that's it and now we can uh, run this uh, test method and we also uh, iterate through each state in the list and print out the state name for state s state in list states we print out the state name system not out of pin line state get name that's it and now let's run this test list by country method right click here run as the unit test Great, uh, the test has been passed successfully, and in the console view, you can see uh, it uh, prints three states from uh, USA, California, New York, and Nevada. And uh, the state of the second country, uh, United Kingdom, is not list listed. We will also test again, change the uh, country ID to E2, so it then it will print only London. I run the test again. Perfect, and this time you see it prints only London as the state because the country is now United Kingdom. Next, we need to code the state REST controller to expose the first REST API for the retrieve operation uh, that allows the client to get a list of states by country. So we Create a new REST controller in the project here. Yeah. New class state uh, REST controller, and we should uh, annotate this uh, class with the REST controller annotation. So, Spring RESTful Web Services, uh, we intercepts and uh, Make the RESTful web service APIs available to the clients. And in this controller, we need to have a, a reference to the state repository. State repository report. And the first API method for the retrieval operation, that mapping, and the URL is forward slash state forward slash list forward slash country and then the ID of the country public void sorry is this method return a list of states states a list by country and we buy but variable ID into a uh, integer object integer ID country ID and we simply uh, return the method of the repository file by country here a new country and we need to have a contractor in the country class that takes all the ID on the ID that's it new country and passing the country ID that's it 
and for testing the bus, we print out the ID of the country uh, to the console. Country ID plus country ID. That's it uh, for the first you know, REST uh, API uh, for the state. Next, let's uh, make the user interface for the state module that uh, looks like this. You see, we we have a button to allow the user to load the country list into a drop down list like this and a list for the states in the selected country uh, label select state text field to enter state name buttons new update and delete so come back to our project in spring 2 3 ide Yeah, we already have a uh, HTML test, yeah, but uh, it is uh, empty. Uh, now let's run our Spring Boot application and so we can test the user interface. It will be similar to the uh, country, so we can copy this. Copy the first button. Well, let me access our Spring Boot application first. HTTP uh, localhost ATAT. Sub me admin. Settings. And you can see in the first part we uh, already done the load countries. Yeah. Many countries here. Yeah. And in this second part we are going to complete the modules for test here now as the button and this would load country list and we name the ID of the button a different tree this would be a button load countries for states Refresh, and you can see the button load country list here. We need to use a you know, different uh, ID uh, for the HTML elements because in the first part we already have uh, the elements uh, in the JavaScript for the country module here. So this time we must use different ID. And then we need to next is a label selected country and drop down list uh, to display a list of countries. So we create a new deep section with the class from bootstrap is uh, form dash group dash group and row. So we will display a row for the form group and label. Label for country drop down. Selected country. Because in the state uh, module, the user must select the country to manage the state or provincy in that country. We specify the class is column uh, small, read to, and column form label, form label. That's it for the label. And then the div section uh, for the uh, combo box or drop down list. We use a CSS class column small 10 and then the uh, drop down list uh, for the country. Select the ID 
of this select element is the drop down country for states and the class is from task control that's it setting states and you can see we have the label selected country and the drop down list country here and then is uh, the next row is for uh, the drop down list the list of states here so copy and paste the label for state and the label text is uh, all states or provinces and in this section we also have a drop down and this time this drop down name id is a uh, drop down states class from control and we specify the height for the drop down list to your pixel and size is equal to 3 so it's, we uh, expand uh, vertically settings states you see uh, the label all states provinces and uh, list for states in the selected country and for the last row which contains the uh, label test view and buttons it is similar to the uh, catches also so we can copy paste and modify the code in the catches catches html here so we copy this section the last row paste here and change the label for state name mm. The ID of the label is the label label state name and this will be state of province name the text view is ID is view state name and the button which in uh, the ID of the buttons as well button uh, Add state, button update state, button delete uh, state, last hit, refresh state. You can see we have the last row for the buttons here. And we also use uh, margin uh, style CS to make the form look uh, better. For the drop down list stairs here, margin 2, and margin 2 for the drop down uh, countries for state. That's it, and refresh. You see, it looks uh, pretty nice, right? Next, we are going to write code to allow the user to load the country into a drop down list. The code will look, uh, look similar to the code in the first part country, so we can uh, copy paste. We have a JavaScript file countries not there here. You can see. The code for loading country is very similar. So we copy and paste this file. Paste name is states.js. States.js. 
we remove the unrelated code keep only the method load catches button load drop down list country button net we change the name for the variables here button load for states drop down country for states button add state fill state name label state name button update state and button delete state and we update the name of the variable accordingly sorry button state fill state name sorry fill state name uh, label state name button add state update state state label state name we will fill state name the drop down catches for state let's see the id in the html code here drop down countries for states here drop down country for states and button id of the button button load countries for states and that's it and we implement only the handler method for the button load uh, for states the method name is the load countries you know, for state the url is the same we uh, we make uh, exact uh, call to consume the rest api for the retrieval operation uh, Getting a list of countries from the database and in the country controller, country rest controller, country rest controller, you can see the API for listing country here, country list that return a list of country. The code is very similar. I'm not country. Button drop down country for states. We just change the update the variable names. Button load for state. Yeah, that's it. Drop down country for states. That's it. And you can see uh, to make exact call to uh, consume a restful web service C API um, for the HTTP get we use the dot get method here with the URL and the callback function when uh, receiving the data from the server as the JSON here and we use a uh, each uh, loop in the query to iterate to each country object in the list and uh, we create a an option element to add to append to the drop down list and that's it very simple and now let's test settings states and click the load country button you see nothing happens because we haven't included this javascript file state.js in the settings html setting.html setting html yeah uh, we need to include the javascript file for state here states not the s and refresh the again states not country list and you see the list of country is uh, loaded into the drop down list here Perfect, right? 
Next, let's right code to uh, load uh, states provinces for the selected state here. When the user uh, select a country in the drop down list, uh, all the uh, states or provinces associated with that country will be displayed in the list like this. So we add the change event handler for the drop down list in the country for test here. On change and execute this function. And we uh, load the test for country. And we call this method uh, right below function load test for country. First, we need to get the selected ID of the country from the drop down list. Country ID equal to the drop down list for states. You know, value is a country ID. Because when we load the add the append the element option, the value is a country ID here. And then construct the URL is uh, context path plus plus the URL in the RESTful web service in the REST controller here state REST controller here state list country and uh, followed by the country ID country ID and we use a uh, uh, the query method that to make exact call for that this URL and the callback function with response they send here and uh, when we receive you know, this response from the server um, uh, we are uh, Update the drop down list states. Drop down list states. Uh, we need to have variable to uh, drop down states here. Drop down states equal. We select the drop down list for states. Here the ID here drop down states. First we need to empty empty this drop down list first. So the user can uh, select another country and it will clear the previous test. Okay, then so for each um, object in the, the response they send, each response they send, we execute this function index and state object because the return from server, uh, return list from the server is the collection of state object, and we uh, create an option element. With the value is a state uh, ID and text is state name and append to the drop down list state drop down states. That's it. Very simple, right? And uh, we uh, invent the callback function when done here. And when fail here, if it fail, alert failed. That's it. Now let's test uh, load test for countries.
settings, states, not country list, and select country United States. And we want uh, the message from the server failed. That means we have some error or problem. Uh, let's see in the console view. Yeah, we want an error here. The request were rejected because the URL contained a potentially malicious string double false lasses. So we need to remove one here. Okay. Refresh and test again. Clear the console view settings. States. Root country and select United States. And this time we don't have any error. And in the server, it prints country ID1. ID1. ID1 is uh, in the database. As you can see here, is for the country United States. But we see empty list uh, states because we doesn't, we don't have any state rows in the state table here. You can see it is empty. Now let's manually add a uh, state. For example, California, look for the country ID1, and New York for the country ID1. Texas for the country ID1. Apply. Apply. Finish. So in the database, we had three states for the country ID1, which is United States, and let's select again, Germany, MT, and United States. You see, three uh, states uh, appended to the list here. Perfect, right? Awesome. And let's add another state to uh, another country, province for Vietnam. Country Vietnam has ID2. So we add uh, provinces, some provinces for Vietnam, Hanoi, I need to Ho Chi Minh City, I need to uh, Da Nang City, Da Nang, I need to and uh, Bình Dương, I need to. That's it for states for country Vietnam. Finish for province. Now let's select Vietnam. You can see four provinces in Vietnam uh, listed here. Let's select United States again. Perfect, right? Next, we are going to write another method. Uh, the method self in the state REST controller to expose the uh, REST API that allows uh, the clients to create a new state or update an existing state. So we uh, switch to the state REST controller class here and we implement uh, another method. So in this method we use the annotation post mapping to indicate that this will handle HTTP POST request and the URL is states uh, slash safe public chain. This method returns the string, which is the ID of the newly created state object. We use a request body annotation to convert the JSON data to a state object. And for testing purpose, we print out the information of the state, uh, like state name, and name, and uh, the country name of the state. Get country, get name, and uh, we return a string representation of the ID of the newly created state. And so. We call repo save state. This 
uh, save method of the state uh, repository return a new uh, state object save state equal and we return exchange value of save state get id that's it for the uh, create and update uh, rest api and now let's write code uh, in the client side in html jquery to allow the user to enter state name and click a button to set the state into the database and then the newly created state will be abandoned to the list here so we switch to the javascript file state.js here we have the reference to the button as state here and we add uh, click event handler for this button button as state click function we call the method uh, add state and we write this method right below function add state and the url is uh, the context part uh, plus uh, the url in the rest api here for state uh, for slash save And we need to read the value of uh, the state name from the text field and uh, the value of the selected countries uh, from the top drop down list here. So we get the country ID and uh, country name. So, okay, so we get a state name first state state name equal view state name dot va uh, view state name your reference to the view state here view state name and we get uh, a selected country object from the drop down list drop down list country for states here we need to use this jQuery select the syntax uh, the selected option and then we get the country ID is the selected country and var and country name equal to the selected country dot text and then we construct the JSON data to be sent to the server for making a REST API call so uh, because we are going to create a proceed a state object a state, state object uh, besides the uh, number of fields ID and name it includes the uh, reference to a country object so we need to construct the JSON data like this uh, name property name is a name state name state name and country country is another object so we will use this syntax and the id of the country that's it for the json data and name of the country country name you see so we need to construct the json data like this for a state object uh, with the fields name and country, country is another object. And in uh, jQuery, uh, we need to use this uh, dot exact method to invoke to make a exact call for the REST API. Type is post URL and before send. Uh, we need to set the request header for csrf uh, and csrf value to pass the spring security token check 
and then we need to use the JSON dot stringy file to convert JSON objects to string format, and the content type of the request is the application uh, forward slash JSON. So here we use as exact method from jQuery exact. And the type of the request is post URL is a URL and uh, before send a callback uh, we need to set the uh, header uh, request header for the CSRF function X S R is a XML HTTP request object X is our dot set a request header and in the settings uh, file here you can see we uh, assign the value of the csrf header and csrf token using template uh, syntax here from the underscore csrf uh, object which he provided by spring uh, security and in the uh, base source you can see View base source, you can see the values of CSRF here. You can see C CSRF header and CSRF token here. So in JavaScript, the query we simply uh, read that value CSRF header and CSRF token. That's it. And then we specify the data to be sent to the server here, JSON uh, representation. So we use the method JSON dot and JSON data and the content type. Content type of the request is application slash JSON. That's it. Or making uh, an exact call to the REST API. And we also uh, override the callback method when the exact call has been done. And you see the REST API, the same method returns a string here, which is the uh, ID of the newly created state so in the callback function we assign to a variable name uh, state id that's it and we'll also uh, override the failure method which is invoked in case uh, any error occur on the server and we just alert error Alert. Done. Created state. Okay, let's uh, test a new state in the application. Settings, state, and we load country list and select the uh, country United States and enter the state name. It is uh, Nevada. Click add, and you can see the pop-up message says done created state. Perfect. Let's check in the server and the database. On the server, you can see in the console view it prints uh, Nevada and United States. Nevada is the name of the new state, and United States is the name of the country. Uh, which is here this print statement print the state name print the country name and let's check the database in the state uh, table you see before uh, and uh, refresh and you see the new state added Nevada for the country ID one which is uh, United States here you see perfect right 
Now, after the state has been created, we want to append the newly created state to the list of all states and provinces here and clear the text view and allow the uh, user to uh, enter new state name at another state. So we need to update our JavaScript code here. After the state has been uh, created here, uh, we need to uh, select the newly created state and we pass in the state ID and state name state ID which is a value returned from the REST API call from the server and state name we read from the form and we write this method write Hello function. Now first, we need to append a new element, uh, new item to the list. So we create a new option element, option, uh, which the value is uh, the state ID and uh, text is a state name. And then we append to the drop down list state. Drop down stairs here, and then we select uh, the uh, newly created uh, state the item in the list. So we need to use this uh, jQuery select syntax to select the drop down country. This is a drop down states. Drop down states. Drop down states here. And option. We select the option uh, with the value is uh, uh, state ID. State ID. And set the property uh, selected to choose. Selected to choose. So this statement we programmatically select an option element in the selector browser list with a specify a value. And then we want to uh, clear the text of the field state name. So we set empty value for the text and request to focus. That's it. Now test again. Settings, states, load countries, select a United States now and the new uh, state name is uh, Utah. Click add. You can see the newly created state Utah abandoned to the list and selected here. Very good, right? You can see the text if your state name is automatically focused and uh, um, lines allowing the user to enter a new state. So I enter a new state name, uh, which is uh, Washington. Click add, perfect right, and I can enter uh, as many as uh, states or provinces as I want. Another state is um, Florida. Add. You see. Let's check the database. Yeah. Refresh. Refresh the state uh, table. Sorry. So we can see the newly created state, uh, Utah, Washington, Florida here. Let's start to add uh, provinces to uh, Vietnam. So we select another country here, Vietnam. And you can see the provinces of Vietnam appear in the list here. And uh, let me add uh, some provinces here. For example, um, counter add. You can see newly uh, state ad province added here. And uh, I found add. 
and uh, đồng nai at huế at um, quảng ninh at You see, perfect, right? And let's check the database. Refresh, and you can see the newly uh, created provinces for Vietnam here. Canton, Hải Phòng, Đồng Nai, for the country ID two, which is uh, Vietnam. Perfect. Next, uh, we are going to uh, write the code to allow the user to select a state or province uh, to update it so when the user select a state or province is here in the list the selected state name will be displayed in the text field and the user can uh, update the state name here and click the update button to update it so before updating we need to handle the select event for this uh, state uh, province drop down list come back to our project and we add an event handler for the um, drop down states here drop down state on change event change we execute this function and in this function we call the method yeah, select state and we implement this function right below below select state when when a select when a state is selected we get the selected state name and uh, display the state name here into the text field selected state name equal uh, we need to get the drop down list uh, state here now this state you get the selected option option colon selected and the text value and then we set the state name to the label state text sorry for the label we set the text is uh, selected Uh, state province and we set the state name for the text field field state name và selected state name and for the button uh, update and delete we uh, enable this two buttons update and delete and the caption of the add button becomes new so button add state we set the property value uh, to uh, new which is the caption of the button and button uh, update state we set the property disabled to uh, false so it, it will be enable disable false and do the same for the button delete that's it and now let's test select a state settings state load country list select the United States and select a state California Mm -hmm. nothing happens so something wrong sorry this should be selected refresh and test again state not country united states select california and you see when i select a state california the name of the state appears in the text field and the label text change to selected state uh, province and the uh, state of the button uh, add become new update enable but delete not enable 
button sorry this should be button uh, delete state my mistake settings states root country list united states Việt Nam okay I select Ho Chi Minh City and you see and you see the buttons update and delete are now enabled allow the user to update or delete the selected state United States Washington you see now we are going to code the event handler for the update button when the user select a state here uh, enter the update, modify the state name and click the update button. It will uh, make an exact call to the REST API on the server to update the selected state with the given name. So in the server side in the state REST controller, the same method is uh, still used to update a state. And uh, in JavaScript, we add event handler for the button uh, update button update state here button update state on uh, click event click we uh, execute this function the function name we call update state and the update state function is very similar to the add state function so we can uh, copy and uh, paste and then modify this code of the add state method right below here function name add state the URL is the same and we need to read the state name and the state ID from the selected state so we get state ID equal the drop down state value We also select get a selected country, country ID and country name, and construct the JSON data. In now we need to specify the ID of the selected state ID property, state ID. That's it for the JSON data, and the rest is the same for the country object here. The same exact code here. And after the state has been updated successfully, we want to we want to update the state name in the list here. So we we have to select it. Uh, we have the selected option from the drop down list here and then we set the text which is uh, state name that's it state name we read here state name from the text field that's it uh, now we can test the update uh, state function refresh state load country list select country united state now i want to uh, update the state name um, for example utah to update to uh, alaska and click the update button here here you can see it is updated to alaska here and let's check the database we have the state utah with id 9 here and refresh and you can see the state ID 9 yeah, was updated to Alaska perfect right let's try to update uh, another province in Vietnam for example update the province uh, Ho Chi Minh City to just Ho Chi Minh and click update you see uh, it is updated immediately in the list and then in the database, let's see, we have the state ID 5 for Ho Chi Minh City. Refresh, and you can see ID 5 
it is updated to just Ho Chi Minh. And after the state has been updated, uh, we want to um, clear the text field here uh, and change the button state here to allow the user to create a new state or uh, province. So uh, after the state has been updated, uh, we want to um, change uh, form state to new that's it and write this function right below and here we want to uh, set the caption for the button as state is new Va. sorry the caption for the uh, add the button is add and uh, the label state name label state name is uh, just state uh, province name and we disable the button update and uh, button uh, delete so we can copy this code And set the property disabled to true to disable the button. And we focus the text field um, to allow the user to enter new state name. So we can uh, copy this lab code that clears the value in the uh, text field and focus it. You see. That's it. When the selected state has been updated, we change the form state to new. Now let's test load country United States, and now I want to update the state Nevada to Colorado, and click the update button here, and you can see. After the state has been updated to Colorado, uh, the label becomes state province name and the text view is clear and focused, allows the user to enter the state name and the buttons update and delete are disabled and the caption of the add button become add and now I can add a uh, new state, um, for example Arizona, click add, Arizona selected here. And Uta. You see, perfect, right? And next, we will uh, update the state REST controller to expose another REST API that allows the client to delete the uh, selected uh, state. So uh, we uh, go to the state REST controller class and implement another uh, method to expose uh, uh, REST API allowing the client to delete the state so in this method we use the get mapping and the URL is forward slash state slash delete and then followed by the ID of the selected state delete and we buy the Part variable ID to an integer value, integer variable, integer ID. And in the method, we simply delegate the call to the repository repo delete by ID. That's it, very simple. And in the user interface, when the user select a state or province in the list here, you also can click the delete button to remove the uh, selected state from the list and then uh, uh, it will uh, make an the application we make an exact call to the rest api to delete the uh, state in the database okay so let's open the script here and we add event handler for the button delete state here 
button delete state click function delete uh, state and we implement the function delete state right below it. and we need to read the value of the uh, selected uh, state ID so state ID state ID equal as a drop down state value and then we construct the URL to make an exact call to the REST API on the server context path plus the uh, relative URL here states delete and followed by the ID of the selected state state ID here and then we can use the uh, jQuery and dot get method to invoke the URL and uh, when the basis call has been uh, done has been processed successfully we uh, execute this function in the callback method done and we um, remove the selected uh, item from the list and change the form state to allow the user to create new state so we use the query to select the uh, selected uh, state item from the list here yeah. we can copy this here yeah. and call the method uh, uh, remove and then we call the method uh, change sorry the method change from state to new here and in case of error uh, we execute the function in the fail callback method here alert error for testing purpose and that's it now we can test delete state uh, or province refresh states a lot country list yeah. select vietnam and i want to delete where click delete mm -hmm. the item doesn't get removed from the uh, list here Let's check the database ID na ID 15. Wait, yeah, refresh. And you can see it was actually removed from the database, but the code to uh, remove from the list is item from the list it doesn't work. Uh, yes, understand. Sorry. This should be the ID of the drop down state. My mistake. Here. Yeah. Now test again. State, load country, select Vietnam. And now I want to delete Bing Zhuang. Delete. And you can see Bing Zhuang was removed from the list in the user interface and the form change C to uh, allowing the user to enter new state and let's check the database the province being zero here should be removed refresh and you can see it was removed and now i can add another state here for example and add luxang add you see perfect right and I want to delete a state in the United States, for example, Alaska. Uh, delete. You can see. And let's check the database for the state in Alaska, uh, which has ID 9 here. Refresh, and you can see Alaska was removed from the database. Uh, perfect, right. And do you notice that the state names and uh, provinces names in the list of state uh, 
uh, are not sorted in any order. So uh, we want to update the code to sort the list of states here. So we need to update the state uh, repository here. Mm, file by country and um, we need to add order by name in ascending order so spring data api we generate uh, the implementation code the, uh, the the query to sort the list of state by name and we need to update here update rest controller here now let's test again and we should see the list of the states of currency are now sorted in uh, alphabetic order in United States and you can see the list of states has been updated to sorted in uh, alphabetic order from A to Z Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, New York and province in Vietnam you see Bắc Giang, Cần Thơ, Đà Nẵng, Đông Nai, Hải Phòng, Hà Nội Perfect so far in the part 2 of the tutorial Crab Ajax REST API course examples with Spring Boot, jQuery and Bootstrap you have learned how to implement another cross module for a Spring Boot project uh, to uh, manage uh, one to many entity relationship uh, with the Ajax course to the REST uh, API and uh, this is a one to many entity relationship in the database. I hope you will find this video tutorial helpful. Please happy to grow my channel by subscribing, like, comment and share this video. Thank you very much.